All right, guys, next part of our Unlock Your Squat Movement Mechanics series. Um, we talked about the lower body majority, a little bit thoracic extension in the last bits. Now we're getting more in the upper body and majority. Today we're going to talk about the traps. So the big neck muscles over here. People tend to overuse when you're behind the desk. Um, so we're going to try to mobilize, activate them and get the function right of the trap. Um, first of all, front rack explained. Like why is it important and what are we looking for? A lot of people with front rack, you do this stretch with the band, a lot of lats and tricep stand, uh, stretches, but there's way more involved in the whole front rack, the chest, that also the traps are working. So um, we need way more than just those two muscles. Well, all right, what I'm looking for in a front rack is first, wide enough grip so you can actually open up your chest a bit so your shoulder blades can pull pull together if you are too narrow you will see that i'm not able to pull my shoulder blades together that's for everybody different so some people really need to widen up some people think they will break their body if they go that wide so first of all make sure the width is wide enough and often with the most of you it's too narrow okay second the front rack is just there to support weight. That's the sole goal. Um, however, with CrossFit, we also tend to press overhead via thruster or a jerk. So it also needs to benefit some pushing mechanics. Um, that doesn't mean that my front squat, front rack can slightly differ to my uh, jerking or push press uh, rack. But in the end, if they're all the same and they all are equal, that means your front rack is stable. You can have a proper grip on the bar. So in the end, it will benefit. So this front rack is, of course, for front squat, but I think it's also beneficial for the thruster. And that's why I'm working for a full grip. Um, of course, I have like an empty PVC. Ideally, I want it to be resting on my shoulders, but it's not able with the PVC. But what I want, that the elbows are pointing forward enough, not over here, but enough, so the bar can rest on the top of my shoulder, the front delt. Um, that's where it should be resting on. So not in your hands, not in your fingertips, on, this, on, the, on your upper body. I want my hands to be as much on the bar as possible. Why? For the thruster, I need to go up, but also when you grab something, you have way better contact with that object. You can feel better what you're doing, so you can correct yourself, but also are you stronger. Imagine being on the toes in a squat, you're way less strong, but you feel also less what you're doing. Full feet, way more contact. Same for the front squat. If you're in the fingertips, it's really, really hard to feel what your upper body basically is doing. Um, and you're often doing more of a wrist stretch than anything else. So that's why I'm more fan of the full grip. So we're gonna to work towards that. So that's the front, the front rack I want to see. Elbows pointed forward, shoulder blades pulled together, bars resting on my delts. And I can easily press, but also squat up and down in this motion. Um, so test that first with a PVC broomstick. Maybe you have a bar, excellent. But something a rigid long pipe will work and test how good am I now with these pointers. So full grip, shoulder blades contracted. How far can I get that elbows up? Do I need the, the, my chin to hold the bar? I need so. Can I pull the bar down a little bit? So we're gonna work around the traps and see if we have improved in this position. So take a picture now from the sides, maybe video yourself that you rotate so you can see all positions because maybe you didn't feel so much positional awareness, but you can see that your shoulder blades are way more open to your better positioning for a front squat, more upright. Um, so this is the test. Now we're getting into uh, mobility exercises where we need a door frame. I have the opportunity that I have a rig next to me, but you often have a door at home, at least one if you have a home. Um, you can put your hands low on the rig, so around hip height, maybe up at thigh height. Press against the rig, make sure the hand is not behind you not in front, but if I had to choose, it's right a little bit in front than behind me. But I want to prevent that my shoulder is coming forward. I just want to have it nice in line with my whole body. So it's probably just 
exactly on the side of my body. I'm going to press with the thumb on the inside into the rig, so I feel that my shoulder is getting engaged, feeling that the chest is working, I feel my triceps is working, so okay, good. I'm engaged, I'm not tilted, I'm just straight. And from here, I'm going to peel my head to the left, I'm tilting it to the left. And this way, I'm lengthening this side of my neck, of my trap. And that I'm going to do for 30 seconds, easy and controlled. Just looking for a nice stretch and then bring it back. Don't crank it too much. You start compensating because that's what we don't want. So just slowly and you can build over the sets. Then do 30 seconds on the other side. Make sure you feel feeling the chest, the triceps are working. You're pressing into your door frame and you're slowly building tension. The next four sets, you can build more tension to uh, make it a little bit harder or prevent any composition. So that's mobility. Now we have just lengthening that trap, has become a little bit more relaxed, hopefully. Now we can get a little bit of weight involved or at least some more tension involved. A couple of options, I don't know what you have. You can borrow some kettlebells or dumbbells that you act. So essentially all of you should be able to have some weight at home. But uh, the next exercise, I will show three variations. Uh, all are the same, so only do one, um, but depending on what you have. So we're going to do the same exercise as we just did on the rig, but now I'm going to have a kettlebell in my hand. Just standing still, make sure I'm all in control and doing the same thing. So from the side, nice in control, again stretching out the trap, but now there's weight pulling me down. If you say I don't have a kettlebell or a dumbbell that's heavy enough, I'm using 16 kilo, that's heavy enough for me, so it doesn't, it doesn't come so heavy. So maybe even a crate of beer or something else heavy at home, you can get in your hands. Um, a toolbox might also work. Other option is getting a band. Get some tension on that band, loop it around somewhere, and you can do the same thing. Make sure the band is tight enough that it really works. Um, and that way you can also put tension on your shoulder so it's pulled down while you lengthen again that trap. Last option. A chair. Everybody has a chair. Um, depending a little bit on what kind of chair. I have this kind of chair, but you can grab the, un the, un the, um, the seating from underneath. And you're really going to pull yourself down. So it's not just going to prevent you falling back. No, you're really going to pull yourself down. Like I'm wanting to push that seat into my own sitting area. So I'm doing that actively. And now I'm also tilting my head to the side. Um, it's essential that you're really grabbing it and pulling it towards your body. So do not just hold it and make sure you're not falling to the side. Really actively pull that seat up. Now there are three variations. We're doing three sets of 10 per side um, where you really are actively being pulled down by this object. So now back to the function of the trap in the front rack. Often we want it more relaxed and more lengthened. So that's what we're going to practice now as well in the front rack. So you're getting your broomstick again. This is the functional part. Getting into your front rack and from here I'm going to tilt my head. If this is too hard for you, you can also just do it alternating with uh, your elbow. So bring one elbow up. This way you can get way more tension on your trap. You can also feel difference between left and right. So we're doing 20 total 10 per side. Then we're going to do front rack openers. We do this often more in the class. Make sure you have the broomstick very close to you. You're going to rotate your elbows as high as possible and back down. Trying to activate those muscles, prevent shrugging. You want that good front back position I just told you about, shoulders played together, full grip on the bar, bars closed so it can be resting on the front delt. Make sure you have those three points in your mind. So those two exercises you alternate uh, and that's for the functional, so how to get into a proper front rack at all. That's your functional test, then you can retest. You've done the whole flow, your neck should be really relaxed now and from there 
You can test now, is it better, yes or no? Can I get that bar lower? Can I get my elbows higher? Does it feel better in general? That's also an important factor. Um, video yourself again, take a photo, whatever, to see the differences. If you see major improvements or you feel major improvements, your traps need some more work and some more love. Um, so in that way, the traps need to be more relaxed and have a better positioning in your whole front squat, for a front track. Side effects, often when your trap relaxes, your whole overhead positioning gets better, but also your whole upper back, back will feel way better, way more relaxed, and that's also a really important part in just being healthy and fit. All right, that's the traps. A little bit shorter one today, uh, similar to single leg stability. Um, but I think it's a very, very overused muscle, muscle in CrossFit. So I think some of you really will benefit from this. Um, next time we will talk about the, the chest and then the lats. And we also will talk a little bit about the triceps. Uh, and then we're finished with this whole series. So Have fun. I know some of you are doing it, but not sending videos. You can also do it in private, um, in an email, or just um, send this on Instagram a video. Please let us know how you're doing so we can get some feedback from you as well. Uh, see if you're improving. Maybe we can help you out with some exercise or exercise selection or what to do if you don't have certain equipment or you're not feeling it while well, you think you need some improvement. So we can help you um, and that way we can better, get better together. Enjoy. Have fun. See you soon.